I know you wrote a quiz yesterday, but not everybody has written the quiz, so you will get the quiz back on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to So, electrolytic cells involve non-spontaneous reactions. And that has, that's, there's a really interesting kind of result of that. A non-spontaneous reaction, if you mix two chemicals, if you mix two chemicals and they would make a non-spontaneous reaction, will they just naturally react together? No, they won't. So what happens is you can have electrolytic cells in one container. You can mix everything all up just in one cell, and then you don't have to worry about them naturally reacting on their own. When you look at this, how many containers are in here? There's no one container, right? So there is a non-spontaneous reaction inside this container, and it won't actually occur until you apply a voltage across it. Now, there's one small mistake in this picture, and that's that the cathode should be the positive terminal, and the anode should be the negative terminal still. The reason why they put negative and positive is because they're hooking up the negative side of the power supply to the cathode. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't. That's not the most important detail. You're never going to be asked which one of these is the positive electrode, right? You just, why? Why do you know? How do you know that the cathode is always the positive electrode? Right. So we're good. Yeah. No problem. So here's a non-spontaneous reaction. We can contain this thing inside one beaker or one container. So here I've got a cell and hopefully you understand, hopefully you see that there's no double line. Everything's being contained all in one container. 
We're going from a platinum electrode to a sodium nitrate solution to another platinum electrode. So I'm curious, I would like you, I would like you to figure out what the strongest oxidizing agent is here and what the strongest reducing agent is here. That's what I would like you to do. Please and thank you. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do something here. Just give me a second. Remember, the sodium and the nitrate is in between both electrodes, right? So the sodium and the nitrate, they could react anywhere. This is all just held in one container. All I want you to do is just find, find the strongest oxidizing agent and find the strongest reducing agent. be told I'm being a little bit of a dickhead right now? This is a trick question. Yeah, you are. Awesome. How about you just Okay, let's try this. Your strongest oxidizing agents and your strongest reducing agents aren't even listed on the sheet of paper. It's not even on here. What, what's the strongest oxidizing agent? Water. What's the strongest reducing agent? Water. Water. Wow. Both, both, like water is acting as the strongest oxidizing agent and the strongest reducing agent here. So let's take a look at it. Let's double, just, just double check and make sure that we can actually identify that yes, that is indeed the case. So we're going to go to page seven in our data booklet. Here we go. And when I take a look at this, we're looking for the strongest oxidizing agent. We go down the list. Nothing, 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 nothing. I see nitrates. Is there anything else? Do you have acid here? No, keep going. Nothing, 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 nothing. Do we have oxygen and water? Like this, this is this is tough. Do you have a tiny little bit of oxygen dissolved in the water? Yes, and more oxygen will dissolve over time. So if you used up the oxygen, more oxygen will dissolve over time. But the idea is that this is, oxygen dissolves into water so slowly that it's not a major entity unless you're really being told that it is, um, or unless we're talking about the oxidation of iron or something like that. So anyways, nope, nothing, 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 nothing. We get water though. So water is indeed our strongest oxidizing agent. Uh, yes, I agree, sodium is down here, but it is much weaker of an oxidizing agent than water. Okay, then we look for a strongest reducing agent. Again, nothing, 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 all the way up until here. So we've got water acting as our strongest oxidizing agent and our strongest reducing agent. So let's go ahead and draw a picture. How many containers do you see in that cell diagram? Uno. Yeah, uno. So we're going to draw one container. And we're going to draw a platinum electrode on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Inside our solution, we've got 
both sodium ions and we've got nitrate ions. But we also have water. We've got tons and tons and tons of water. <coughs> now what we want to do is we want to hook this up to some sort of a power source. So I'm going to draw almost like a battery and it's going to have a positive and a negative end. And what I want to ask you is where are electrons coming out of from our power source? Are they coming out of the positive or the negative end? Yeah, the negative end. Their power source, a battery or something like that, it releases electrons from the negative end. So that means that electrons are being forced, electrons are being forced this way through the power source. So can you tell, the way the diagram is, is, is looking right now, can you tell which electrode will be the cathode? Is the cathode going to be on the right-hand side or the left-hand side? Right. It's going to be the right-hand side because it's gaining electrons, right? So the one on the right-hand side, this is acting as our cathode. What would happen if I reversed the power source? The left one would be the cathode. And it's just so it's just the way that the picture is being drawn in my particular diagram. So without even knowing anything about the reactions, where is the sodium going to migrate to? The sodium ion, where is it going to migrate to? Is it going to migrate towards the right hand side or towards the left hand side? Why the right hand side? It's a cation, and cations migrate towards the cathode all the time, right? So our sodium ions are going to migrate towards the right-hand side, and our nitrate ions are going to migrate towards the left-hand side. Good. So we've got, we've got our diagram. We don't even know really what the reaction is, but we've got our diagram. So let's give the half reactions at the anode and the cathode. At the cathode... Do you have your strongest oxidizing agent reacting, or do you have your strongest reducing agent reacting? Oxidizing. Your oxidizing agent, right? So at the cathode, <coughs> let's write the reaction for that strongest oxidizing agent. <coughs> Remember, our strongest oxidizing agent was way down here. Two waters plus two electrons gives us hydrogen gas and hydroxide. Two waters whoa, plus two electrons gives us hydrogen gas and uh, two hydroxide. <coughs> and then at the anode, do we have our strongest reducing agent or our strongest oxidizing agent? It would be our strongest reducing agent. Well, that's water too. We just got to look on the other side of the table. So we got to look for water on the other side of the table. So water, two waters, turns into oxygen, four hydrogen ions, and four electrons. Two waters turns into oxygen gas plus four hydrogen ions, plus four electrons. Good, I love it, perfect. Now what we could do, if we wanted to, we could get the net reaction for this thing. So let's take a look, what's our lowest common multiple of electrons? Four, so we just have to multiply the top uh, equation by two. We could do that, do you want to or do you care? No? Okay. Uh, what, what are our two products going to be? Or what are our, what, not our two products, what are our products at our two electrodes going to be? Sorry, I misspoke. So what's the pro, what are the products at the cathode going to be? Hydrogen gas and hydroxide. So we should be getting a gas being produced, right? And then at the anode, what are we going to get? Oxygen and hydrogen ions, right? Um, determine if the cell is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Well, let's do that. 
let's determine the cell voltage or the, the standard cell voltage. So I'd like you to do that right now. If you get a positive, what is it? Spontaneous. If you get a negative, it'll be non-spontaneous. Double check what you got with what I got. And make sure it's the same. So is this a spontaneous or a non-spontaneous reaction? Non-spontaneous, perfect. What's the minimum voltage we need to put across the cell in order to make it go? 2.06 volts. Now, depending on the concentrations of a bunch of different stuff, this is just water and water, so it should be about 2 uh, volts, no problem. So what I want to focus on is I, I, I don't have... I don't have sodium nitrate, but I have zinc nitrate. And so what, what I want you to see, what I want you to check out is <coughs> instead of sodium, instead of sodium, if we had zinc, would the zinc work? Yes. The zinc, what would, what's a stronger oxidizing agent, the zinc or the water? Water zinc. The zinc, okay? So the zinc's going to react. So. At one side, we're going to get zinc being made, zinc being plated onto something, right? We're going to plate zinc on one side, but that's okay. We can still we see what's going on on the other side of the reaction. So at my cathode, instead of, instead of forming hydroxide at the cathode, I'm going to be forming zinc metal. That's fine. But at the anode, this should still be the reaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my power source here. And we're going to do this in a second, kind of. Um, we're going to take my power source. I'm going to hook up the... You guys don't know which one is positive or negative, do you? Let's write this down. Does anybody know which one is, is positive and which one is negative? Like between red and black? Red's positive, red's positive black's negative. And I don't, I don't know why, but, I, but the way I was taught it was in this weird robot voice. Okay? And just bear with me is red is positive, black is negative, and so every single time for the rest of my life I will think of it like that. <laughs> Whatever, don't worry about it. So red, positive, black is negative. Perfect, no problem. That's going to be important here for a little bit. So uh, I'm going to turn on my power supply and I'm going to basically crank up the voltage. And so what I have here is I've got... I've got tiny little sticks of carbon. Oop, that's not going to work. It just came off. Yeah. So I'm going to use the actual carbon electrode here. There we go. Something better catch on fire. Is that what you said? Yeah. It's not going to be worth it. Sorry. Um, so uh, what's happening here is. I don't know, hopefully you can see. Use your safety glasses, Walter. Ugh, thank you, Jonas. It's not going to happen, sorry, buddy. Um, so this is, uh, this is normally a neutral solution, but I'm going to add some drops of bromothymol blue at both sides. Uh, yeah, this is going to work, whatever. I'll do, a, I'll do a better demo. We just don't have enough time for me to kind of do all of the... The little fine details and make sure it's working and I didn't have flex to uh, to make sure that this was gonna go so we're gonna do something a little bit different okay um, what I want you to do is I want you to get some experience in electroplating metals here we go nope not that not that not that not that mm. oh maybe electroplating is on a different is on a different sheet sheet yeah, 
Do you have room anywhere on this notes package? I don't think you do, hey? I don't think there's any empty room on any of the pages. that I can see. No. No, can I just get you can I just get you to take out like any other sheet of paper at all? Any other line paper, any other scrap paper, any other sheet of paper, anything at all. Because today's such a weird day, I want to get into the lab and I want to start electroplating something. So what we're going to do is we want to electroplate some sort of a metal and, and a lot of metals are coated with zinc because a lot of metals are galvanized. Um, so let's just take a look at this kind of random example. What I want to know is, is, is what's the strongest oxidizing agent here and what's the strongest reducing agent? So we've got, we've got copper aqueous ions, right? That's going to be our strongest oxidizing agent. And then zinc metal is going to be our strongest reducing agent. And what I want to know, do they make an uphill or a downhill reaction? They make downhill reactions. So if we just stuck these things together, we would end up making a downhill spontaneous reaction. But what we can do is if we attach this piece of zinc, Let's draw this a little bit differently. So we're gonna have a carbon electrode, and then we're gonna have a piece of zinc. Whoa. And it's gonna be sitting in a solution of copper two plus ions. If I force, if I force the zinc electrode in here, if I force the zinc electrode to gain electrons, okay, the reducing agent normally reacts at what? The anode or the cathode? The reducing agent, so not the oxidizing agent, right? The oxidizing agent normally reacts at the cathode, so the reducing agent normally reacts at the anode. But here, am I allowing, am I allowing the reducing agent to react at the anode? No, because I'm forcing electrons that way, so by default, this is going to be the cathode. I'm forcing this to be the cathode. And it's just like, sure, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. It's, if you force enough electrical energy onto this system, then you can basically make, not any chemical reaction, but you can make a lot of chemical reactions go. So that means all of a sudden the zinc, the zinc is not really reacting here. I want to be very clear. The zinc's there, but the zinc's not going to react. So what that means is that your, your copper... Your copper two plus ions will still plate at the cathode. It's just that we need to find a new reducing agent somewhere, okay? And that's what I want you to kind of think about as we do this lab. And so what's gonna happen? I'm sorry. Yellow, this is great. Good, how are you? I do. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Bye. Show hey. You gotta go to the office. <laughs> no, no, it's Italian, man. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a petri dish, and our petri dish is gonna be filled with some copper two sulfate. 
And we still want to take our uh, carbon electrode. Our carbon electrode has to be attached to the positive. So what color, what color, red or black? I don't care what color wire it is, but the red or black knob that's sticking out of this power source, which one should it be attached to, the carbon? It should be attached to the red one, okay? Because red is positive, perfect. So we want to stick our carbon electrode, which is attached to the red. We want to stick that in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take any, any other chunk of metal that you desire. We've got lots of scrap chunks of metal out in the lab, okay? So for example, I took a quarter, and a quarter is covered absolutely with the metal that would react spontaneously with copper and I forced it overnight on a really tiny low voltage. I forced it overnight to react and I coated it with a small amount of copper metal. Jordy, question. Is what? Is, is the question is for the audience and YouTube, isn't that illegal? And my answer is yes, it probably is. <laughs> um, uh -oh. But I just thought, I just thought it would be interesting. I thought it would be really interesting. Oh, it's a quarter. It's a quarter, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I'm destroying money. Legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You, sh you totally should, and you should actually, you should actually see if somebody gets mad at you. Somebody call a possible <laughs> okay, so what you got to do is you have to using a, attach the other piece of metal and you have to put it in there and you're going to crank up the voltage as high as it'll go and I just want you to see what's going on. Is that okay? That's all we're going to do for basically the remainder of class. So there's some power sources out there already, but if there aren't enough power sources and I know there aren't enough power sources for everybody, then you gotta go all the way to the end of the lab and I'll open up the cabinet doors to have the power sources in them. Are we okay with this? Yeah, let's try this. Um, you don't need aprons, but definitely glasses. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm going to get Okay. So as as other people pile in here. Uh, period 3 to 10.39, so we got 13 minutes left. <laughs> so what I want to know, what I want you to try and figure out is, I want you to figure out, okay, we know the copper was plating on the cathode, we know that. Yeah. I want you to try and figure out what was the reaction that was happening at the anode. That's what I want you to do right now. So you have to find the next strongest reducing agent in our list, right? Find the next strongest reducing agent. Because we know the zinc can't react. The carbon might have been breaking up because the reaction was so vigorous. It was producing bubbles. It was such a high pressure at that location that it was literally yeah. just breaking apart the carbon electrodes. So I, I would suggest that the carbon is not reacting itself. There's something in the solution. Figure it out. Figure one out. We want to know. I wasn't here. I know. We want to know what reaction is happening at the anode. We know copper is being plated at the cathode. 
So anode, is anode usually oxidizing agent or reducing agent? Uh, yeah, it's, it's reducing agent. So you need to find the next strongest reducing agent. Because the zinc obviously couldn't react, right? Mm -hmm. We were forcing electrons onto the zinc, so the zinc can't give up electrons. That's not possible. So find the next strongest reducing agent other than the zinc. Well, that's that's the reaction. That's our strongest oxidizing So that's reacting on the right? Depends. That's what was plating on the metal. Our metal was. So we know that that was our strongest oxidizing yeah, what's the metal that's traditionally It was, right? It was. But the zinc can not Because we're forcing electrons onto the zinc. So the zinc can't just give up electrons. It's not possible for it to give up electrons. It's not going to give up electrons. And now it's forcing more electrons. So basically, think about the zinc wants to give up electrons, but we're forcing electrons onto it. So it can't react. Yeah. The zinc literally is on the control. So let's find the next strongest reducing agent. The next strongest would be what? So does that mean that the CU is reacting with the water? No. Because. It wasn't carbon. Wasn't the one carbon was losing mass. Carbon was was losing mass, but not because it was reacting. So carbon was losing mass because we were getting uh, reading. Let's go, Lily. Wow. That it was literally getting and did your cathode me and Lily No, because Sanjana, the electrons are being forced onto the piece of zinc or whatever metal we're plating onto. Okay? So, so because this thing is being forced to gain electrons, by default, it's the cathode. That means the other one on the positive side, electrons are being stolen from here. The power source is stealing electrons away from it. So by default, it has to be the anode. Okay? Now I understand that this was losing mass. I agree with you. I get that. But we'll talk about why that is here in a second. Okay. Okay. So what's what's the next strongest reducing agent in our in our solution? Water. Water. The next strongest reducing agent is water, right? So let's take a look at this. At the cathode. At the cathode we had copper two plus. Gaining two electrons to turn into copper metal. Would you agree the cathode was gaining mass in this situation? Yes. Your piece of solid metal? Absolutely. We were taking an aqueous ion, so not a part of the electrode, and we were plating it. It was depositing onto that metal. So yeah, we're gaining mass for sure. Right? That all, doesn't always happen, but in this case it did. The anode, where we have our next strongest reducing agent, that was the water reaction, right? What was it? Two waters. In, and it turns into four electrons and four hydrogens. Two. Plus O2 gas and plus then four electrons. Four electrons. Good. Yeah. So was it the carbon that was like Okay, I I want to explain what was happening in there because a lot of people saw when when you had your petri dish and you had your your blue solution inside the petri dish when you put your carbon electrode into that petri dish When you put your carbon electrode into the petri dish, would you agree, would, would some of you agree that little bits and pieces were starting to fall off of that carbon electrode? Mm -hmm. For some of us, that was happening, okay? What I want to do is I want to blow this picture up. I want to like really zoom into what's happening at the carbon electrode. 
Carbon, these carbon electrodes are a little bit porous. So what that means is that if you, if you really zoomed in, like super zoomed into this thing, you would see a surface that looks a lot like this. Do you know what I mean? If this was the, if this was the edge of your carbon electrode, there's little pockets that solution can get into inside that electrode. Now, when the water, when the water gets into these little pockets, what's happening? What are we, what are we making at the anode? We're making acid, right? We're making hydrogen ions. But what, what else are we making? Oxygen gas. And we're making oxygen gas so vigorously that this water gets turned into, right? This water gets turned into oxygen gas, and we get a bubble of oxygen gas forming inside this pit. Now, if the bubble of ox oxygen gas has a high enough pressure, right? If we're forcing this reaction so vigorously that we form a bubble, what happens if the bubble gets too high pressure? It's gonna snap off parts of this electrode. Does that make sense? So is your electrode, is the carbon actually reacting here? No. no, it's not. Is The carbon is losing mass, but it's just a coincidence of the way that the carbon electro electrode has been formed. That's all. If you were to have a perfectly solid chunk of carbon, then it would form the, the gas the bubbles on the outside, and they wouldn't have any ability to chip off chunks of the carbon. Yeah, yeah. Is it, does that make sense? Is that okay? Cool. All right. Um, on Monday, I don't really know what else we can do right now, but on Monday we're going to continue on with this. No, Tuesday. Tuesday, thank you. On Tuesday we're going to continue on with this. We are going to talk about um, something called the chloride anomaly. And, yeah. Uh, and we're going to do another lab involving potassium iodide. Jordy, you're